Linda Sarsour is in the news again, this time for a reference to jihad. Now, the clips and stories that are being circulated draw attention to her call for jihad against Trump. But if we take a closer look at what she said, I don't think her comments about jihad were as ominous as some of the video clips suggest. However, when we go through the rest of her talk, we finally understand Linda's role in the conflict between Islam and the West. As for the context of the jihad clips, Linda talks a bit about protest and democracy and freedom of speech and patriotism. She says that Muslims are being oppressed in the United States, and then she quotes a hadith about the best type of jihad. There was a man who once asked our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, what is the best form of jihad or struggle? And our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, a word of truth, truth in front of a tyrant ruler or leader. We find this hadith in Sunan Abu Daud 4344, where Muhammad declares, the best of jihad is a just word spoken to an oppressive sultan or an oppressive emir. Of course, this hadith is graded Hassan by scholars of hadith, so it's a second tier hadith. If we want something in the Sahih category, we go to Sunan Ibn Majah, 2794. It was narrated that Amr bin Abbasa said, I came to the Prophet and said, O Messenger of Allah, which jihad is best? He said, That of a man whose blood is shed and his horse is wounded. So the best type of jihad involves bloodshed, fighting, and warfare. And what's the goal? Muhammad tells us in Sahih al-Bukhari 2810. Narrated Abu Musa, a man came to the Prophet and asked, A man fights for war booty, another fights for fame, and a third fights for showing off. Which of them is in Allah's cause? The Prophet said, He who fights that Allah's word, i.e. Allah's religion of Islamic monotheism, be superior, is in Allah's cause. What's the goal of jihad? Making Islam superior. But does Linda know this? I'm not convinced that she does or doesn't. She only quotes the hadith about speaking to an oppressive ruler, and that's the context of her comments about jihad. And I hope that we, when we stand up to those who oppress our communities, that Allah accepts from us that as a form of jihad, that we are struggling against tyrants and rulers, not only abroad in the Middle East or in the other side of the world, but here in these United States of America where you have fascists and white supremacists and Islamophobes reigning in the White House. So based on what we see in the video, it doesn't sound like Linda is calling for killing anyone. But there's much more in the video than Linda's comments about jihad. She begins by praising Imam Siraj Wahaj. And to my favorite person in this room, because that's mutual, is Imam Siraj Wahaj, who has been a mentor, a motivator, an encourager of mine, someone who has taught me to speak truth to power and not worry about the consequences. Who is Siraj Wahaj? Critics often point out that Siraj is an unindicted co-conspirator in the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. I don't trust unindicted co-conspirator labels very much unless I know what they're based on. I trust the label with CARE because I know why CARE is called an unindicted co-conspirator in a Hamas funding case. But with Siraj, I haven't seen the evidence linking him to the attack, and I've known too many prosecutors to fully trust prosecutors. So I'll let him slide on that one. If you have more information, please share it in the comments section. In the meantime, we do have plenty of disturbing quotes from Siraj's sermons and lectures concerning American democracy. He says, Islam is better than democracy. Allah will cause his deen, Islam, to prevail over every kind of system. And you know what? It will happen. In time, this so-called democracy will crumble, and there will be nothing, and the only thing that will remain will be Islam. And unlike most American Muslims, Siraj doesn't seem to be confused about Sharia. Thus he proclaims, If Allah says 100 strikes, 100 strikes it is. If Allah says cut off their hand, you cut off their hand. If Allah says stone them to death, 
through the prophet Muhammad, then you stone them to death because it's the obedience of Allah and his messenger. Nothing personal. Imam Siraj seems to know quite a bit about Islam, and Linda calls him her mentor. He even magically speaks to her in her time of need. You might think this is weird, but every once in a while when I get into that deep, a dark place, um, Imam Siraj comes and talks to me. When I find myself in times of trouble, Imam Siraj comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, death to America, Allahu Akbar! Now, if you're Imam Siraj and you want American democracy to come crashing down so that it can be replaced by Sharia, what do you need? Conquering the most powerful, most prosperous nation in history is not an easy task, so you're going to need a plan. What steps are you going to take? First, you need to convince Muslims that their top priority is protecting the Muslim community. Our number one and top priority is to protect and defend our community. It is not to assimilate and to please any other people in authority. Second, you need to point out that Muslims are massively outnumbered in order to get them to start thinking strategically. Unity among Muslims isn't enough because there aren't enough Muslims to take on their oppressors. The best estimate that I have for you is that we may be about 5 million Amer uh, Muslim Americans in this country. That's on the high end. There are about 340 million Americans in this country. So you are only 5 million of 340 million. You are not enough on your own. Third, since Muslims can't take on the oppressors on their own, they need to form alliances with other groups that share a common enemy. We need to build coalitions. We need allies. And what happens if all of the groups that oppose the oppressors unite? Now, if we took all of the opposition and put them together, and we took all of the Muslims and all of our allies and put us together, right? The opposition is not more than we are. They don't have more money than we have. So all Siraj needs to bring America to its knees is someone who can unite the opposition. Where, oh where, could he find someone like that? Every single day, sisters and brothers, I dedicate my work and my life to aligning myself with communities who are marginalized and oppressed in this country. But where is Linda getting her ideas from? After all, she isn't an Islamic scholar. I know what my role is. I don't lecture people about our deen. I'm not a religious scholar. I don't allow people to ask me my advice about a particular struggle that they're having with their Islam, because that's not my area of expertise. Someone else has to do the scholarly work for her. And who does she respect most? Imam Siraj Wahaj. It goes without saying that when you align yourself with a man who admittedly wants to obliterate American democracy in the name of Allah, you're asking to be used. I'm an organizer. I'm a communication specialist. I know how to do social media and PR. That's what I know how to do. So if you know what my talents are, use my talents. Putting all of this together, I see two possible interpretations. We already know what Imam Siraj Wahaj believes. We know what his goals are. We know what Linda Sarsour says about Sharia and Jihad, but we don't know whether she's being deceptive or whether she simply has no clue what she's talking about. Her comments about Sharia and Jihad are quite frequently false or misleading. So the two possibilities are, one, that she's deliberately deceiving her listeners about Sharia and Jihad in order to complete her work of uniting various groups and destroying America's democracy, or two, that she actually believes what she's saying because that's what she's been told by the scholars she respects. She lets people like Imam Siraj do her thinking for her, and they give her the information they want her to have so that she can be effective in forming alliances with other groups. Now, based on what I've seen and heard from Linda, I suspect it's the latter. I think she's being used, which is exactly what she invites the Muslim community to do. And that means that Linda Sarsour, like so many Muslim activists, is a mere puppet 
for someone with a very clearly stated agenda. The feminists and social justice warriors and students who align themselves with Linda are therefore the useful idiots of a puppet of a jihadist, not realizing that if Imam Siraj ever has his way, they'll all be violently subjugated, just like the groups that aligned themselves with Muhammad when he fled to Medina. Are we understanding Islam yet? 